Hey everybody, it's Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. We've got some heavy rain that had moved through the area this morning, but now all our attention turns to this midweek storm, which could bring some icy weather to the Carolinas. And it's kind of a fascinating setup, but let's focus on today's system first. You can see it moving out of the region pretty quickly here. You can see all the rain is exited up to the north and east. Still got some lingering showers that are going to move through in the next couple of hours, but we're really starting to see skies clear out back to the west. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to show you the temperatures. We'll throw those on real quickly. And you can see the warm air just ahead of the system, 60s and 70s. But as you go back to the west, it gets progressively colder. In fact, the setup for this cold air is coming from a region up here in Canada where we've got below zero readings uh, now just crossing the border from Canada into the lower 48. If we go up into Canada, you can see some of these temperatures, minus 36 to 40 below zero it is cold up there so that's the cold air heading our way but we've got a system out west that's going to move in and cause some of this uh coming the wet weather on wednesday that may be mixing in with some ice let me show you the, that one so i'll pull up the satellite imagery and you can see here on the east coast here's system number one sky's beginning to clear out a little bit but look at this thing right here i'm going to pause this at the very end here and I'll show you, this is the system we're watching. This is going to dive down to the southeast and then try to move up the coast as a nor'easter. At the same time, the cold air, which I just showed you up here over the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains, is going to be shifting east as well, supplying cold, dry air at the surface, which is going to get pushed down into the Carolinas. And that's going to kind of set the stage for our winter precipitation, mainly in the form of ice, unfortunately, on Wednesday. So the setup should be pretty interesting as we go into Wednesday. So let's go to the guidance here. We'll start looking at our future cast. So you can see system number one here. We'll go through time. Uh, tomorrow, actually Tuesday, will be a beautiful day. Sunny but very chilly as the cold air gets set up. So what's happening is in between the systems, high pressure up here is supplying cold air down to the southeast and into the Carolinas. You actually see the lake effect snow streamers. That's a sign of the airflow, which is pumping in cold, dry air at the surface. Two things to note system here but watch what happens on the coast as well we're going to get what's called a miller b setup which means we're going to have two separate low pressure systems which are kind of difficult to forecast because depending on when the energy takes over on the coast it can really change your weather so you could see our system you, it's clearly showing up right here but also notice off the carolina coast we've got low pressure trying to form so we've got an upper low which is going to move east and eventually the energy is going to transfer to the coast and this will become the dominant low. But when that happens is always a big question mark. The whole time this is going on, we're trying to get cold air being pushed down from the north and east. And that's what's supplying the precipitation chances for wintry weather. So we go into Tuesday night. We'll go, we'll stop this at about two o'clock in the morning. You could see moisture starts moving into the Carolinas. Now it's all green right, right now initially, which means primarily rain. But you notice some of these reds starting to mix in or oranges. That's freezing rain or sleet. And primarily freezing rain in this situation starts to spread into the region. As we go through, this is what, 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning, 4 a.m. I'm going to stop this at 5.18. So you can see scattered freezing drizzle or rain. The rain is really starting to take over. So around Charlotte, yeah, I could see some sleet pellets, maybe even a flake of snow initially. But it's quickly going to change to freezing rain and then to rain very quickly. So not much of a chance for icing. Just a quick glazing in the treetops. Roads should be fine. But as we go through the morning hours, this is 6.30 a.m., 7.30 a.m., um, 8.45 a.m. You could see how the, how the precipitation picks up. And where it's heaviest and coldest is right in these areas up in here. So those are the areas of concern. But... One of the things about freezing rain, it's self-limiting. And what I mean by that is when ice freezes, you have to take heat out of the water to cool it, right? When you boil water, what happens? You add heat to it to warm it up. When you freeze water, you have to remove heat from it. So when you remove heat from the water, where does it go? It goes into the air. So eventually when you create ice, you warm up the atmosphere unless you get a constant supply of fresh cold air being pushed down to resupply the cold air that you're using up by causing freezing. If that doesn't happen, we call it a self-limiting process. Freezing rain eventually will shut itself off and it just becomes a cold, miserable rain. In that case, you could see that happens pretty quickly. So eventually this changes to all rain um, as we go through the day on Wednesday. So 
The amounts look pretty light, but there's a few locations up here which we know about. Uh, Western Burke County, Western Caldwell County, Wilkes County, um, areas eastern facing slopes that could stay ice for a lot longer than the guidance indicates. And you can see eventually this could change back to snow in the mountains before it exits by 7 p.m. Now, where there's going to be a significant winter storm <laughs> is just north of here. You could see that ice and snow much heavier up to our north, and that's the area where we'll potentially have some very heavy icing. In fact, the winter weather or winter storm severity index shows the highest impacts could be up here in West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, and into Pennsylvania. So could be a pretty interesting setup there. So let's talk about amounts. So we're going to look at a couple things here. We're going to look at the short range, um, uh, intent, uh, excuse me, short range ensemble forecast was a shrimp. Lost my mind there for a second. And this kind of takes all of the guidance and kind of blends it together, at least the short range guidance. And you can see the snowfall forecast from this first system is really heavy up in West Virginia. But as we go into Wednesday, there just isn't much snow here in the Carolinas. It's primarily ice. You can see a little bit of snow on the back side, but you know, I'm going to stop this. This is Thursday night. That's not, there's no snow east of the mountains, but let me show you the ice forecast from the same guidance. We'll show you the freezing rain potential as we go into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Watch this ice develop here and notice where it's heaviest. Now, I think this is a little too far north, but you can see a bullseye up here in southwest Virginia. I think this could extend down here into areas of North Carolina, northwest Piedmont, and the foothills, primarily the area we're watching. But I'm going to show you a couple other pieces of guidance. This is the short range, um, you know, um, the short range ensemble forecast. Let me show you some of the freezing rain products from some of the other guidance to kind of give you an idea. Um, I don't know why it's not popping up. Well, that was going to be the GFS. Let me show the European. Um, we'll see if we get it to, sh to show up here as we go through. That's a European model. Notice it's kind of in that same area, but actually a lot less. Let's go back to the GFS. Maybe it'll actually show up here. Oh, this is actually this morning's run coming in. So let me back up because it's not fully in yet. The GFS shows it a little bit further south and a little heavier around Hickory and Statesville. But you kind of get the idea. All the guidance is hinting kind of in that same location. And let me show you the forecast currently from the um, Weather Service. They're going much lighter, but they have it a little further east as well. So you kind of get the general idea these locations along Interstate 40, which I'll draw here, right here, north, is where we're watching. And in particular, I think right there. And I'm going to go back to the model map, and I'm going to show you the area I'm, I'm of greatest concern for me. I still think the potential for some significant icing could happen right in here. So this is the location where I think we'll see the highest ice. Now, there's no winter storm watches yet. Um, no advisories, anything like that. This is probably not going to classify as a winter storm watch yet. We'll have to see. We certainly will see winter weather advisories or freezing rain advisories at some point. But right now, our biggest concern is icing. And this is going to start on Wednesday morning and go through the middle of the day on Wednesday. So you're looking at a time frame, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning Wednesday, maybe an hour or two early, give or take a few hours, and lasting through about lunchtime. Of course, I'll have updates all day today tonight, tomorrow as we get closer to this event. But uh, snow lovers, this is not a snow event. This is going to be, unfortunately, a ice or rain event for us. Uh, the mountains, you could get some good snow out of this on the backside, but even there, this looks pretty icy.